Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some practice problems using the kinematic equations that we learned about in the last video. So just as a quick reminder, these are the four kinematic equations that we will be using today. You don't always have to use all four, usually you just use one for one problem. And my strategy typically for kinematics problems is I like to write out the five kinematic variables, V initial, V final, acceleration, time, and displacement. And the goal is to have three of the five of those. If I have three of the five, then that means I can plug into one of the four on the left and we can solve the problem that way. So let's go ahead and get started with the first practice problem. A car speeds up from rest with a constant acceleration of three meters per second squared. How far will it travel after 10 seconds? So as you can see here, we meet our criteria for using the kinematic equations. In other words, we have a constant acceleration and it's not zero which means we get to use kinematics. So I'm going to write out my five kinematic variables and my goal is to know three of these. So V initial, the starting speed, I bet that's going to be zero because we're starting from rest. So V initial is zero. V final, I have no idea what it is and it doesn't matter, I don't need to know all five. Acceleration we know is three because it says it in the problem. The time is 10 seconds, again, it's in the problem. And then delta X, the distance or displacement is what we're solving for. And we know that because it asks how far will it travel. So it looks like we have all the variables except for V final. Is that a problem? Absolutely not. It means that we are going to use the equation that does not have V final in it. And only one of these four has no V final in it. Go ahead, pause the video for just a second. Think about which equation we need to use. The answer is, we need to use the second equation, that's the one that doesn't have V final in it. So I'm gonna write delta X equals V initial times time plus one half AT squared. Delta X is what we're solving for. V initial is zero times 10, which will just be zero, plus one half times three times 10 squared. And if you just plug this in a calculator, pretty easy you're going to get a final answer of 150 meters. And that's how far you travel, very simple. So that's it for the first one. Now let's look at another example. So here's the next one. A ball is thrown downward at four meters per second from the top of a 50 meter tall building. What will be the ball speed when it hits the ground? The first thing I want to address is, will the ball speed be zero? Because that's the number one most popular answer for a question like this. It also happens to be the number one wrong answer because the speed is not zero when it hits the ground. Let me explain why. Would you want to get hit by this ball? And the answer is obviously not. Why? Because the speed is not zero. Now the reason you probably thought zero is because yes, after a long time, the speed of the ball will be zero because it's on the ground, obviously. But we're saying if you had a speed gun and you got to record the speed like right before it hit the ground, that's what we're talking about. So with that in mind, I'm gonna use the same thing I did before, write out the five kinematic variables and ask myself, what do I know and what do I not know? So first, V initial says it right here, it's four. V final is what I'm solving for. Acceleration we did not talk about. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but that's gonna be negative 9.8 because we use negative 9.8 for the acceleration of gravity in physics whenever an object is in free fall, like this problem is. The time is unknown, and delta x is 50. Now, after you write this down, I have a question for you. I made two mistakes just now, when I was listing out these five variables. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can figure out what my two mistakes are. And the answer is, the first mistake I made was, since it's thrown downward, it's not four meters per second because that means it's thrown upward. It's negative four because I'm throwing it downward and that's very important. The next mistake I made is I said delta X was 50 meters, but that's not true because that's saying you threw the ball up 50 meters. If you want to say it went down, you got to say negative 50. And that's the thing you've got to be really, really, really careful about with kinematics is remembering those positives or negative signs based on whether the object's going up, which is positive or down, which is negative. And so now I need to use the equation that does not have time in it because I have three of the five variables and I don't have time. And that's going to be the third equation, the one with the squareds. 
So I'm going to say v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Now v final is what I'm solving for. v initial is negative 4 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 50. Now if I plug the right side in my calculator, negative 4 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 50, I get an answer of 996. And all I need to do now is take the square root of both sides. And when I do that, I get v final equals 31.6 meters per second. So the final velocity of the ball when it hits the ground is 31.6. And again, that's not true. Why not? Because we know that this ball, when it hits the ground, is moving downwards. So this answer should be negative 31.6, but how on earth would we have known that? Simple, because you know from algebra, or at least you should, you probably don't because for some reason all my students don't know this and it just boggles my mind how no one taught you this. But when you take the square root of both sides, remember you gotta say plus or minus. And then it's up for you, the person solving the problem, to decide whether or not we need the positive version or the negative version. In this case, we need the negative version because we're going downward. And so the final answer, and you're going to hate me now, but the final answer, since it's asking for speed, and remember, speed is just the absolute value of velocity. That's the definition. The final answer is positive after all. Yeah, I know. Physics is confusing. But don't worry. No more tricks. That's it. It's 31.6 meters per second. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and bye-bye.